The best way that I know how to, to cut um, tissue paper is to take a paintbrush, dip it in some water, and put it along your tissue paper. I don't like when the tissue paper has a straight edge because when you use it to paint over, you can really see that straight edge. If you just rip it a little tiny bit, it'll give you a frayed edge, which will help the look of it so much. It really does improve how it looks when you put it on your piece. Now, I didn't take a video of it, but I did prep this piece a little bit differently. <laughs> so I painted it with some paint, and then while the paint was wet and I laid it on its back, see all that white stuff on there? I took salt wash, which is a texture medium, and I sprinkled it on the wet paint. So that is salt wash on there. It's just on there, and then I sprayed it with some water. Sorry I didn't take a video of that. I thought I had. But anyhow, um, the, pa the paint was wet. It looks like a hot mess right now, right? So the paint was really, really wet. And I painted it, and then I sprinkled that white stuff, which is salt wash, and I let it dry like overnight. Now I'm gonna add the tissue paper to the front of this. I kind of kept the salt wash off the middle of this because I wanted it to um, not have too much texture in the middle. I am spraying my tissue paper. I'm using an 18 pound tissue paper, which is a really high quality dish tissue paper. The water will help the tissue paper stretch over those little valleys. Do you see the little bumps and valleys that there are? It's going to help it so that it doesn't wrinkle so much. I am using a really high quality top coat. This is called Satin Clear Coat. I do not like Mod Podge. I do not use it. I am putting a coat down. This is actually a Dixie Belle product. It is Satin Clear Coat. I am putting satin clear coat down. It is great for a clear coat for, for like a glue kind of thing because it doesn't dry really fast. It takes a long time to dry. So it's a great it, um, adhesive to use. And it also is even better to top coat with. So I'm kind of just smoothing it out lightly with my hands. Do not press hard because you do not want to rip the paper. Now. This is going to be fun, right? Because the paper is going to go over all these valleys. I want one continuous thing. And then when the paper is dry, I will cut the drawers. There are one, two, three drawers, I believe, in this thing. So I'm taking the satin clear coat. I put it down as the glue. Now I am using it over the top as the adhesive. So I'm going to spray again. I'm going to spray the paper. I kind of want the paper to bend and be able to... Um, not bend but like expand a little bit so this is kind of the tricky part right you just got to be slow and careful and you don't want to spray too much water because you don't want to rip it but you know you want it to be able to be more flexible and by spraying your tissue paper as a pro tip it'll become a little more flexible so I'm just gonna keep trying to go down and this was very tricky because this dresser is bow front right so once you start going over these curbs you're gonna start getting a real funky kind of um, thing and you're trying to go over the curves and the drawers and just take your time that's all I got to say take your time don't rush it and don't press it too hard and tear it if you do tear it it's okay because you can always paint the same color as your tissue paper um, on it now one thing that I did notice after it was all done actually and you can see it in the video the tissue paper is a little crooked <laughs> but oh well you know what it's not a perfect science it is art so I took one of my brushes this is actually a paint pixie brush it's called um, the Buffy it's a little one and it's great because instead of using my hands and my fingers that are will make me rip my paper I used a soft brush to kind of get that paper to smush and adhere and go where it needed to go. So I'm going to do this all the way down the front until we get to the next step. So this is where you've got to be really patient. It takes patience and just time and just, you know, perseverance. It's hard to be patient on this stuff. I get it. Um, but just take your time. I did grab my blade because I did see that there was like, it was kind of pocketing 
in a perfect world, I wouldn't have cut this while the decoupage paper was still wet. And I didn't have a long enough blade. I wish I had a longer blade. So it's dry. It's, it's already been timed. The tissue paper is dried. I've cut the drawers so that they're all can open and everything is peachy keen. So the tissue paper really has to dry for quite some time and I did, I did let it dry overnight so that the next day it would be good and hard. Now, when we put the satin clear coat over the top, it's a protector, right? So now if we actually do get some paint on that area, guess what? All we gotta do is wipe it off. So now we're gonna start to add some paint. So my idea was to try to pull colors from the actual tissue paper itself and start kind of fading around it. Now, the tissue paper, remember, we tore it, so it's not a straight line. It helps so much when we blend around it. We can blend over the top of it too, because remember, we put a clear coat on it, so it's already sealed. If for some reason I get too much paint on there, I can just wipe it off with a damp rag before the paint dries. So I am using a variety of chalk paints and clay-based paints. Um, the first one is called Butternut. It is a color from Mud Paint, which is a clay-based paint. It is that pretty, pretty um, buttery yellow. The second color I'm using is Sawmill Gravy. That is from Dixie Belle. It is a chalk paint. The chalk and the clay paints play really well together, you guys. You don't have to worry about them not. I am using a Klingon F40 brush to kind of give me a swirly swirly. Remember! Underneath this is all that salt wash. Remember that? We've got that base coat down of that gray color, and then we sprinkle that salt wash on, and now we're kind of painting over the top. To be honest, swirling it around kind of just gives me a really cool, soft, blended look. Um, remember, it's got to start somewhere. It's always going to be ugly before it's pretty every single time. People will go, oh, well, that's not pretty. See on that side, there's the white underneath with salt wash. The salt wash is hiding. We're just kind of swirling it around. We will knock some of it off. It's just what happens. You can see it on the ground in front of me. But it's not to worry. Um, we are just going to keep blending and adding color. So the yellow with the kind of creamy off-white. And we're just building our base coat. Just trying to get something... Um, to go over to kind of frame in that decorative tissue paper because it's not going to be this color when we're done. Believe me, it's not. So we've got to get something underneath there because remember, we're going to chip off that salt wash, that, that texture. We're going to chip it off after the paint's all dry and it's just going to give us such a cool look. We're going to do so many things to this piece. This video was a little bit longer than most of the ones I do, but don't give up because there's so much information in this. We're not only going to blend it, um, we're going to show the texture right through. We are also going to crackle it and wax the crackle to make it super, super aged. So don't give up on me, don't leave, just keep watching because it's gonna be packed full of really cool things. So then I grabbed a little bit of a turquoisey color. See the color of the bird's wings? I was like, oh yeah, baby, so that's what I need. I need something to tie that in. It's like, yeah, it's kind of bright, but oh well. I think it's going to be cool, but then I'm like, okay, maybe I need another color. You know, color is kind of the hardest thing ever to do. So then I grabbed moss, which is a green by um, Mud Paint. And I'm going to blend the green with the blue, and guess what? All of a sudden it came together. It was like, oh, that's the color we needed. So it toned down that bright blue of the peacock, which is the Dixie Bell color. And now we're kind of blending it over the yellows. Um, we're going to end up distressing this. So all that stuff is going to show through. A little bit of green, a little bit of blue. I even have some dark blue in my container. I can't remember what color that one was. Um, it looks like... Stella Luna from Miss Lillian's. Like I said, I use, I sell five different brands of chalk paint or clay paint. I use them all. I love them. I love, I use them all intermixed. The brand. 
All right, so we're just about done with just kind of like tr trying to get a blend and trying to get it over. And I am painting over the tissue paper. I am definitely painting. So we went ahead and matched both sides. Now, I've taken my putty knife, I've already started this, and I have been scraping off. Remember when we saw that big chunks of salt wash on there that was put into the wet paint in the beginning? I'm taking my scraper blade, my putty knife, and I have scraped off all that, okay? It's crazy. It's fun. It's crazy. Putty knife, and I'm just scraping the surface. So the salt wash just sat on top of the paint, and then I sprayed it with water, and then we painted over the top, doing all of our layers. Remember, it's all about the layers. So I'm going to take my putty knife. You can see right there I kind of scraped it too much where you can see the wood but it's okay. We can always blend over the top or we can just make it look like it should be long there. The salt wash is white, but the salt wash really is just gonna change colors when we wax this. You can spray it with water if you wanna see what it looks like because really the, the base color that we started with is what's gonna be underneath there. By sprinkling that salt wash into your wet paint, what you do is you create little, um, resist. Everywhere where you put the salt wash it, it resists with the paint and then you paint over it and then you take the salt wash off and then it has like little craters. It makes it look super old and super cool. Okay. This is where the fun part starts to evolve, right? I sprinkled it everywhere on the bottom, on the sides, everywhere. So just taking that putty knife and just kind of going over trying to not scrape all the way to the wood but just scraping that layer back from that salt wash that just got sprinkled over the top it's crazy but it's super fun because it will show you when we start to wax and put <coughs> other finishes on it i got it in the grooves there and everything so if you're totally confused at this point don't be stop Rewatch it or listen to what I'm telling you. First coat, regular paint. Sprinkle salt wash, let it dry. Blend over the top, then scrape off the salt wash. Pretty simple. Here's a close up, okay? And it's going to be white because the salt wash is white. You can use Dixie Bell Sea Spray also. It is pretty close to the same kind of texture medium. It just gives you a resist. Most of the time I mix the texture medium into my paint to give me texture. This is kind of a different way, more of a, like a crater texture. And you, like I said, I'm not really, I'm not rubbing super hard, but it gives me a resist layer, okay? So then we're just opening up the pores, so to speak, so that we can then um, add a wax over the top and the base color is gonna show through. This white is just because the salt wash was white. But like I said, if you were to actually spray water over this, it would t you would see it right away. It's not going to stay white. Believe me, it's not going to stay white. Listen to me when I tell you that. <laughs> I, I, I do this stuff all uh, for a living, and it just I, I just can't stress enough how easy this is to get these really cool looks. It took me a long time to learn it, and once I did, I was like, ah. Oh, bonus right okay just keep scraping off the salt wash with your putty knife be careful not to scrape across too much on your tissue paper because you don't want to scrape the tissue paper off of your piece you know it's been dry a day right so it's pretty well adhered but just be careful because if you hooked it underneath the um, paper you could and can I can I point something out can you see the line of the tissue paper now? If I had cut it square, you could totally see it. Since I kind of let it have that little feathery edge when we did the water on the tissue paper, look at how it just looks like it fades in to this dresser. So keep scraping off the salt wash till you get it all done. Okay, now I'm gonna grab a piece of sandpaper. It's just a uh, two, 220 grit. And I'm gonna just gently go over and smooth out that textured part okay I'm just gonna go over it and smooth it out 
We still haven't done the very sides. We're just doing the front for now. Smooth it out. Try to get if there's any bumps or weird things because it was a lot of texture that we put on that, like a ton of texture. So we're just going to smooth it out. Here's where we started. Base coat, salt wash, sprayed it with water. Look at what a hot mess that is, right? Now we're going to do the same thing on the sides. We're going to paint the yellow, the, the off-white, the green, and just start doing, going all the way up and doing that, okay? We're just kind of putting it wherever. Patting, 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 not really stroking because I will tell you that the salt wash will come off a little bit and it'll clog up your brush. So just kind of pat it, pat it, pat it. Don't try to stroke it. Um, that is Dixie Bell Sawmill Gravy. That's the tan. The yellow is Mud Paints Buttermilk, which is one of my favorite colors of all time. Love that yellow. Makes me want to paint another yellow piece. And then just kind of fill it in. Not, you know, don't worry. See how I have spots that are still open? Like I didn't cover the whole gray. It's okay. Don't worry about it. It's okay. So we're going to do both sides and get them done to match the front. So I decided I wanted to antique this baby a little bit. I wanted to make it look super old. So I took some crackle, medium, it's Dixie Bells. It goes on like glue. I just use an old chip brush to do this. Um, you put it on, you let it dry, and then you can put something over the top. Well, I chose to not put paint over the top, but to put a glaze medium over the top. So what happens, is the glaze medium, when I do put it over the top, dries and makes it look even more antique. So this is Crackle. I don't care what brand you use. Just put it on thin. Um, it's like glue. It really goes on like a glue substance. I'm going across the entire piece. I will do the sides also with this. It takes a hot minute for this to dry. So just read the instructions on your jar. Like I said, I don't care what brand you use. I just happen to have Dixie Bell's Crackle. Um, it's pretty much the only one that I use. See the spots right there that I'm going over with the crackle? It's pulling the salt wash off. So now you can see that the, the, the cracks are really that gray that we originally started with, right? So we're going to put the crackle over the whole thing, and then we're going to let it dry. So it's dry to the touch. Light. So here's the secret. Crackle activates when another product is put over the top. Either paint or... A top coat so I grabbed my satin top coat top coat once again and I'm brushing it over basically it's gonna crack naturally now normally you would put a paint over it a paint over the paint and the underneath paint would show the cracks through the top well then we don't want that so we want to fool it we want it to pretend like the other product so it's really gonna crack here it's gonna crack all by itself, but you're not gonna really see it because I'm just putting a clear coat over this whole thing. I know, like why is she using so many products? There is a method to my madness, stay tuned. So since we put the clear coat over the top, guess what? When we put a dark wax over it, it's gonna fall in and go into all the cracks. So I am using DIYs dark wax. It's called dark wax. So any kind of a brown wax will work. Well, Wise Owl has a great dark wax. I like the oil-based waxes, so that would be Wise Owls or DIYs or mud paints. Dixie Bell only has water-based waxes. So I am putting this over the top, okay? I am rubbing it in really, really well. The clear coat that we put on here made it crack, but you can't see it. Not yet. You're going to in about two minutes. Now, the wax over the top is going to age this so much. If we hadn't put the clear coat on, it would just look like you smeared a bunch of mud across the top. We're going to grab our microfiber and we are going to wipe back. Because the clear coat is there, it has protected that paint, but it's activated the crackle. So when you get a close up look of this, you are going to see the tiny little fissures that are in the crackle. This piece has just aged 50, 60, 80, 100 years. Just like that. Just like that. It's aged so much. There is very fine lines that cracked 
and the wax, the dark wax is setting in it. We're going to repeat that over the entire piece, but it is very, very important to have the clear coat down first. Can you see it? It's very hard to capture, but can you see, you can see it right there. Ah, oh, you can see it. The fine cracks, right? Wasn't that brilliant? I love doing this part of it. Like it was so much fun because I liked how it looked like it was instantly aged and old. <clears throat> so much fun. Now we're going to continue putting the dark wax everywhere. Basically, the dark wax and the clear coats are sealers. They're going to be totally sealed. That's pretty much all. That's going to be pretty much done. Now, of course, I'm going to sand the top down to raw wood. I'm going to stain it, but I'm not going to waste your guys' time in showing you that. But the thing about the dark wax is the clear coat has saving the paper from looking like I just smeared mud all over it, right? So the clear coat's the barrier. The oil-based waxes are nice and smooth, and they go on very fluid. A water-based wax would be harder to work into these, so I suggest you try. And like I said, DIY wax, um, the Debbie's Designs IRE um, DIY, and I do retail all of this. It is on my website tonatransformations.com but this wax and make sure you do like one section at a time don't do the whole thing and then wipe it off put it on one drawer wipe it off put it on the next drawer wipe it off when you're wiping off dark wax remember to can you see the difference in the two drawers remember to move your cloth to a clean part of the cloth because if not you'll just be rubbing the wax across the piece more it just adds that extra touch. Were you wondering how people did that? I bet you were. So was I. Now you know. I'm giving this away for free. So make sure that you like and subscribe. If you want any of the products that I've used, the tissue, the paint, the salt wash, I do sell it all. Or if you have a retailer by you, go see them. But I do have it all. Um, please um, go like my Facebook page, go to my website, message me, comment here, do what you guys want to do. But look at how cool that is. It's so antiqued and so old. This piece sold in a matter of weeks. It was a fabulous one. And actually, now that I am watching this video again, I think I need to do another one like Lickety Split, right? It just turned out so good. The dark wax is just such a light. See the difference? You can barely see it. It's just such a light deviation but it adds so much. And then the dark wax settles in those grooves on the side. It's just so pretty. Most of the time I don't smear dark wax all over an entire piece, but in this case with the crackle, it just made it, gave it that antique look that I was, the vision I had in my mind. So you guys go have fun with it. Let me know if you enjoyed my video. Please subscribe to my channel. I plan on doing at least I don't know, two to three, four videos a week. We'll see. I have tons of them. So I will keep um, doing them for you. Comment, like, subscribe. You guys, I think this is so much fun. And I hope you do too. If you have any questions, let me know. My name is Debbie Tona. I am the owner and operator at Tona Transformations. I tell everybody every time I sign off my videos to go out and be fabulous. Because you know what? There's nothing else to be but fabulous. You guys, have any questions? Let me know. Enjoy!